All right. In this lecture, we're going to learn about my favorite editor, VI or Vim. Uh, talk about the differences between the two. Uh, there's very little these days, but uh, it's not only my favorite editor, but it's also uh, sort of the de facto standard of the default editor on a Unix machine. So every Linux Mac machine will have uh, an installation of Vim. And really, Vim is the only editor in which you can say this about that. I mean, so that at the end, I'll, I'll mention a few other popular modern editors. Um, but those will not be installed by default on most Unix systems. So you either have to install them yourself, which is usually not a problem if you have all the administrative privileges for the machine. Um, but, but obviously, if it's a remote machine where you're not the administrator, then that could cause some, you know, it could be some trouble installing it. Uh, and particularly the, the really modern graphical user interface uh, um, uh, editors, it, you're going to have trouble when you log into machines ro remotely that don't have graphical user interfaces on them at all, like uh, a typical supercomputer where you're just going to uh, interface with it through, uh, through a console or terminal window. So, uh, Vi um, was the original kind of the standard Unix editor. It was written originally by Bill Joy, and you might have heard of him uh, because he went on to start Sun Microsystems, which was later uh, bought out by Oracle. So he bought, uh, or he wrote Vim when he was a student at Berkeley, working on BSD Unix. Um, and like I mentioned, it's it's basically installed already on every Unix machine, and so. Uh, but in fact, what's really installed is Vim. Uh, so Vim is Vi improved. So it just has some uh, little bit, some uh, more features, more usability, uh, plug-in ability where you can add additional features to it uh, and customizations. And so this was written by a guy named Brim uh, Moulinar, and um, again, standard editor on Linux. But today, we'll often say Vi or Vim interchangeably. So uh, almost always we're talking about Vim when we talk about Vi or Vi. And so to edit a file in Vim, you just type Vi uh, on the command line and the file name. Um, so you can start a new uh, a new file uh, this way. So you can just say Vi new file uh, dot text, and it will open up a new file. Uh, we'll go ahead and close there before we edit anything. So the one major difference between Vim and other editors is that you don't typically just open up a file and, and start typing text. Uh, there's several different modes. One of those modes being insert mode is the mode where you would actually insert text. Uh, but when you're actually editing a file, uh, specifically when you're moving around, when you're uh, looking for something to edit, uh, when you're searching for keywords to replace them, when you're searching for keywords to replace them, uh, you'll do this in something called normal mode. And in normal mode, you can't actually change the text of the file um, directly. Uh, it's, it's a little bit awkward. It takes some getting used to, but once you master it, uh, it it's amazing. Um, and then there's also uh, EX mode or last line mode. And this is where you, you would save the file, or you can even run shell scripts and other things from within in these modes. And so let's uh, just look at a couple of commands. So um, in insert mode, you would, uh, you can, you can, um, these are all the commands that would take you from normal mode to insert mode. So the easiest one, if we go back to our uh, new file, uh, if we want to just, ins you know, right initially we're in normal mode. If we want to insert, uh, we would hit I. Uh, you can see it changes uh, down here. It says insert. And now we can actually type some text. Uh, and then when we want to go back into normal mode, we would hit escape, okay? So then we can move around a little bit, and entering um, normal mode, or going from normal mode back into uh, insert mode in some different ways is, for example, we could hit capital A, which would automatically move us to the end of the line where we could uh, type some more text. Um, we could actually in go from normal mode to insert mode by opening a new line on the next line by typing O. So now uh, we are on the next line. 
we could uh, be on this line and actually open a new line above the one we're on by typing capital O. So now we've entered insert mode uh, while it created a new line above the one where our cursor was on. Like that. So the normal sort of um, operation in Vim is to enter insert mode, type a few text, and immediately go back into normal mode for editing. And then this is very weird uh, at, uh, at first, but you can, um, you can really be productive when you do this. So uh, going back, again, there's some commands. Again, uh, I just takes you right into insert mode to the left of the cursor. A appends it to the right of the cursor. Uh, capital I will take you directly to the beginning of the line. Capital A will take you directly to the end of the line. Lowercase o opens below. Uppercase o uh, opens above. Um, replace would replace a single character under, this, under the cursor. Um, capital R replaces all things to the right of the cursor. And then S uh, replaces a single character under the cursor and then stays it in insert mode. And likewise, capital S replaces uh, under the cursor and all, and then basically overwrites everything from that character to the end of the line. Uh, again, these are here for reference. Uh, eventually, you'll remember these things, and a lot of time it's intuitive: I for insert, A for append, other things like that. So, in normal mode, uh, and and you know, part of the reason that you often want to go between um, insert and normal mode so often is because it's much faster to move around uh, the screen in normal mode. And so uh, you'll notice that just to move the cursor around, you actually use um, H, L, K, and J. So all the hands, on, all the keys on the home row in your right hand. And one, again, this is a little awkward at first, but eventually uh, you'll get really used to this. So you move around the screen with these commands. Uh, likewise, you can, you know, if, if you're on this line and you want to move four to the left, you just append a four and, and then hit L, and it'll immediately take your cursor four to the left. Again, five L will take you five to the left, um, four J, sorry, four H would take you um, four to the right. And you'll find that over time, if you really work on this, this becomes a, a muscle memory thing, uh, and it's as natural as, as typing. Or, uh, keyboarding where you're not actually looking at the keys. Uh, you can just move around the screen rather quickly uh, this way. So um, those are you know, some relative movement operations. There's actually some word navigation. So if you, if you type B, that takes you back to the beginning of a word. 4B would take you back four words uh, to the beginning. E takes you to the end of the word. W moves you to the beginning of the word again. So you can move around like this, uh, hitting B, um, hitting uh, 3E will take you there. Again, 3E will take you there. And so um, you can move around one word at a time. There's also ways to move to, if you're, if you're editing, so, say, uh, uh, narrative text, you can move to the end of paragraphs. Um, you can move to the end of lines, end of complete sentences, whatever. Um, so uh, there's a more navigation, uh, absolute navigation. You, like, you can go straight to a line. You can go to the beginning or the end of the line. So if you're here and you uh, hit uh, Shift 6, which uh, is the caret, that takes you directly to the beginning of the line. You're still in normal mode, so you can go to the beginning of the line and then say 2W uh, will take you two words forward. Uh, if you hit... Uh, dollar sign that will take you to the end of the line. Uh, if you hit three capital G that will take you to the beginning of the third line. So all of these operations are here. Um, these are absolute navigation, so how you move around a file. Um, you can also scroll within a file. So from normal mode, uh, we have a very small file open uh, here. So uh, I'll have to show you some of these operations a little bit later. Uh, in a different example, but basically, in this case, uh, the, the caret is actually the control key, so we're going to hit control F to move a full page forward. Uh, five, control F would move you five pages forward. And you'll see these patterns where 
all of these movement keys can be co combined with numbers to do things repetitively. So if you want to do, if you know a command to do something once, you can do it five times by just sticking a five in front of it. Um, so uh, some simple text editing. So if you just want to delete a single character under your cursor, uh, you can type X, or delete text to the left of the cursor, capital X. If you want to delete an entire line, you would type DD. So again, if we go back here, uh, some examples here, we can type X, that just erases the A. Um, I can type uh, capital X, which uh, erase the, the space uh, to the left of the character. I can type DD, and that'll get the whole line gone. Uh, I can be on any line, and I can type capital D and that'll erase to the end of the line, and then I could you know, add some more text. So, and then re return to normal mode. So again, the idea here is that you typically edit the text in normal mode, and then only enter to insert a few, you know, what you need to type new, and then immediately go back uh, to normal mode for navigation and editing. Um, so, so you can move text, you can, uh, anything that you delete, you can move it. If you type a lowercase p, that'll put it to the right of the cursor, and uppercase p to the left of the cursor. So I can't recall quite what we... Uh, the last thing we deleted, but it should be stored in the buffer. So if I open up a new line, uh, return to normal mode, and then type P, uh, there, that's that's what I would erase from from that line up above. So the thing that you have to memorize are the following operations: D for delete, Y for yank, and C for change. And what you can do with these is then combine these with um, other uh, movement operations. So for example, if you want to delete three words, then you, you simply just have to say 3DW, and that'll delete three words. So for example, if I move to the beginning of the line, or perhaps I should go to this line, and I just say 3DW, uh, you see it deleted the first three words, right? And then I'll return. Uh, so again, uh, that's just, uh, again, saying what I was just saying. So uh, if you want to delete five lines, you could just say 5DD or 5, uh, you know, 5DD would delete the next five lines. Um, and there's some other examples. But, but the idea is basically if you memorize these operations and combine them with movement operations, then you can uh, efficiently edit some text. So let's go to an example um, that I kind of have prepared here, here's two little pieces of C code. The first one uh, over on the left has some errors in it. Uh, the first one on the right is what we want to edit the file to be. Uh, so again, uh, we're missing some braces here. Uh, the end should be void. Uh, the, the, there's some other problems in here. These should be double quoted. Uh, this should be slightly different. Uh, we're missing a semicolon and some other text here. And so. Let's go look at how we would edit this quickly in Vim. Now, I'll go slow and explain what I'm doing. Uh, but the idea is to basically have the minimal amount of text movements uh, that it takes to, to edit this file. So I'll go ahead and quit uh, the file we've, we've been working on and open, uh, sorry, open our C code there, file.c. Again, so uh, the first thing that we'd like to do is add the brackets to uh, to surround uh, sdio.h, the header file there. So uh, to move our cursor to the beginning, we'll just type w twice. Again, you could type 2w there. Uh, we'll enter insert mode, add the bracket, back into normal mode with exit, capital A to move us directly to the end of the line and be in insert mode, and type the other Bracket, uh, bracket there, and then back into normal mode. Okay, so then I want to uh, move my cursor to the 
to the second line. I mean, in this case, it's actually the third line. So one way I could just say 3G. That will instantly move my cursor to the end. A um, couple of things I could do here. I could write CW to change the word, which basically brings me into insert mode a minute, um, instantly there. Um, I'll go ahead and undo that with a, uh, a U and give you another way to do it. You could simply just type DWI uh, and then I'm in insert mode and I can type void. So this is sort of one extra keystroke there, but you know the idea is just to do things as efficiently as you can with what you know. Um, so again, I'm going to move down a line. Uh, this time I'm going to move my cursor directly to the tick mark by typing F tick. That's going to search along a line for the first instance of the tick mark. I'm then going to replace it uh, by typing R double quotes. And then I can again, a couple of things I could do here. I could go uh, say three words forward to take me there. Um, let's see, I don't remember the exact what I'm trying to do here. I'm, I'm trying to change that to uh, percent D. Okay, so go back. Uh, I can uh, type 2x to delete those two. Uh, type A to move my cursor after, followed by slash N. Uh, return to um, uh, normal mode, move my cursor one over with the L, and then replace that with a, a double quote. And then return to normal mode, Capital A, move to the end of the line, semicolon, return to normal mode, move down a line, type I1, um, add the text there, return to normal mode, open a new line below, and close the brace. And there we've edited the file uh, appropriately. And uh, here's what the, the correct file would look like. And I believe they're, they're the same. Uh, perhaps I'm I'm missing a space uh, here. I don't know how important that would be. But if I wanted to, I could go directly to 4G. Uh, that will take me to the fourth line. Then I can uh, search forward uh, for the second instance of the, of the uh, quote. So I can type 2F quote. Uh, that will take me directly to the quote. Type I to enter insert mode and, and, and space to have a space there. And then again, I'll just uh, save this thing. So um, that was an example of uh, editing a file. Um, you know, copy buffers. We th this is we already showed a little bit example of, about this, but this is where we store things that we yank or copy. Uh, you know, Y is the command for copy, so uh, we yank. Uh, and we can use this to copy and paste in between files. Um, we can store things in a particular buffer if we want. Um, so in this case, if we use this syntax where we have uh, the quote and followed by a y y, what that would do, you know, y y is going to yank the entire line and store it in the buffer a. And so then later, if we want to paste that, then we just uh, use this command down here. AP. And so, again, an example of that, uh, I have another file here. Uh, so, <coughs> if we want to say um, yank this line and store it in the buffer B, we would um, type uh, quote BYY, and then if we wanted to um, paste that on a new line, we would type quote BP, and then uh, there it, it pasted that line. Uh, so again, you can undo that with U. Uh, Other things you might want to do, uh, are things like search and replace. Uh, so uh, we can search and replace. We use the backslash, just like more and more or less. Uh, I've already talked about that. Uh, you can use the backslash and then enter a pattern uh, to search forward in the file. The, the uh, question mark uh, will search above in the file. And so uh, let's go back here and look for a pattern that we might want to search for. 
Uh, how about, for example, slide? So I'll type uh, slash slid, and that will take me to the first instance of slide. And then I can type lowercase n, and it will take me to the next instance of slide, and the next instance of slide, and the next instance of slide, and so on. If I want to go back up, instead of going down, I can type capital N, and that will take me back up for every instance of slide. And, and so uh, those are a couple things. Uh, another so another thing to do is uh, common is to search and replace. So um, for example, what we'll do here is we'll enter EX mode, in this case by making sure we're in normal mode, typing a colon. You'll see the cursor move down here to the bottom of the screen. Uh, we have to give it a search range. If we use a percent sign, that will be the entire file. Uh, we'll do S for search. Um, we'll search for slide and replace it with beam globally. And uh, you see there, if I move back to the beginning of the slot to the file, everywhere where we previously had slide, now we have beam. Uh, so it's been replaced globally. Likewise, you can use the highlight. So if we type a capital V, that will highlight line by line that we can move around with our movements. Uh, then we can enter, uh, type a colon, and we'll enter into a search mode that will only search in the highlighted region. So in this case, we could uh, take beam in our highlighted region and replace it with slide uh, globally, which means every instance in the line. And then, for, or at least for those two lines, we're back to the way we were before. Uh, so there's more information here about, about those operations. Uh, and again, I just discussed the visual selection. Um, we've already used uh, the U, the lowercase U, uh, undoes the last command, and you can do this multiple, you know, you can undo multiple commands by repetitively typing U. Um, uh, capital U will, replay, will ch make, uh, reverse every change that you've done on a particular line. Uh, a period repeats the, the last line, and then you can, you can create shortcuts uh, or abbreviations. So, for example, if there's certain words that you would type all the time, um, like uh, perhaps you'd want to, uh, you'd want to, uh, you'd want to enter uh, an abbreviation that is uh, JTF for uh, John uh, T. Foster, and like that, then you should be able to type JTF, and then when you hit space after that, it'll automatically expand. Uh, if you type space or enter, it'll automatically expand that. So um, you could you can do this for many commands that you use uh, often. So returning here, um, you know, again, the EX mode commands, you enter EX mode by typing colon, and the W means right. Um, the most common one would be to uh, type colon WQ, which means write and quit, um, and, you know, exit vim. Uh, you could also quit without writing by, uh, you know, if you type colon Q exclamation point, uh, that, that will get you out of a file without making any changes to it. And in, case, in that case, this is what we want to do here to this file I've been editing. We don't really want to keep those changes where I changed, um, um, you know, slide to beam and such. So, uh, what I'll do here is I'll just type Q uh, exclamation point, and now I've uh, left that file, and if I open it again, then you see none of the none of the changes that we made were in there. So uh, a couple of tips for using Vim. Uh, the better you get at navigating with your hands on the home row, the more productive you'll be. So uh, you should learn to quickly to stop using the arrow keys. And in fact, you can turn off the arrow keys completely in something called a vimrc file, which is where you can do a lot of customizations. Uh, I'll talk more about that later. Uh, and again, that's sort of what the second line says there. You can, you can customize your settings uh, and learn about vim plugins, which are very useful uh, for doing a lot of things uh, even more quick, quickly. Um, so there's a big, uh, you know, I mentioned at the beginning of this lecture that vim's my favorite editor, but I try not to be evangelical about it. There's a big debate whether you should use Vim or, or Emacs. Um, I think you should try them both out, but I think it's always useful for someone to know a little bit of Vim 
because it, you know Vim is the default sort of Linux editor, so you, you can guarantee that it'll be installed. And so you know you you may find yourself in a situation where you log into a computer and you just need to do a couple of simple operations, a couple of simple edits, and it's not worth the trouble of installing your favorite editor, what, whatever that might be. Um, uh, again, the, the, the sort of two classic editors uh, that are that are uh, most people have some knowledge of, one or the other, is either Vim or uh, the new Emacs, and these are live links, so you can follow these links to uh, learn more about these editors. Uh, a, a popular editor on a Mac, which is a native application, is Sublime Text, uh, and sort of the newest uh, editor on the scene is Atom, which is actually made by GitHub. Uh, and again, it's a native editor for Windows, Mac, and Linux uh, that is, you know, installs natively on your machine and has a lot of useful features for editing code. I think you should know a little bit of Vim and then either master Vim or master some of these other editors. All of these editors um, have similar features in the way that you can um, move around and edit files quickly using short keyboard, keyboard shortcuts and everything else. Uh, none of the other ones that I know of uh, have this, these mode operations in the sense that you're in normal mode or insert mode and you move between them like that for editing operations. Um, I will say that most modern editors actually implement some clone of Vim features inside them, uh, and that's a sort of an, a testament to the popularity of Vim. So for example, like Atom, uh, there's a plugin that will actually en enable you to use Atom, uh, but use it in Vim mode, if you will. Uh, and this is pretty, pretty common in lots of editors. Including uh, the, the Cloud9 editor that, that I've been using here, which is a cloud-based integrated development platform. Um, I've, you know, you can use Vim natively from the command line, but also if you just were to open up and edit one of the files uh, by double-clicking on it over to the left, uh, you can set the settings such that you're actually using Vim commands uh, to move around in the file. So, with that, I'll. Uh, and